Hi, I'm Barry Ostrowski. At RWJ Barnabas Health, we believe that everyone needs to be informed about the important health care issues affecting their lives. That's why we're proud to support the important educational programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Investors Bank, NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology, Jersey Central Power and Light, RWJ Barnabas Health, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, the New Jersey State Nurses Association, and the Institute for Nurses, advocating, positioning, educating NJ's RNs, and by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, founded by the Jewish community. Promotional support provided by HipNewJersey.com. Live hard, work hard, play hard. You're from New Jersey, and so are we. And by Jaffe Communications, where business, media, and government converge in New Jersey. Steve Adubato here. We're at the uh, Essex County Eagle Rock September 11th Memorial Essex Remember Ceremony, the uh, 15th anniversary of September 11th. Um, what you're about to see is not just part of the ceremony, but a series of interviews that we conducted with some extraordinary people, um, family members of survivors from September 11th, um, an actual survivor of that tragic day 15 years ago, elected officials, appointed officials, people who are connected to that day, right here on my left, as part of this extraordinary monument, this place here at Eagle Rock, 57 names of Essex County residents who lost their lives. Over here, 343 firefighters, dozens of police officers who lost their lives. We remember them today. The fear is that people will forget, but this special, talking to people about what they remember, what this day means to them, and why our country needs to never forget that day and what we need to do moving forward. Um, it's an important program. We ask you to, as you watch, think about the significance of September 11th and what it means to you, what it means to our country, and what it ultimately means to our children and the generations after them. County Executive Joe DiVincenzo. Every year it's special. What makes this year even more special? Well, first of all, it's, it's the 15th year, but for many of them, especially family members, it's it's something that uh, you know it feels to them and to all of us that it just happened yesterday. I think the most important thing today was the four family members that spoke. I really thought that brought it home to hear their stories about their loved ones, to hear the survivor talk about which he went through, uh, it was pretty amazing, you know, uh, and I think it was good for everyone to hear. You know, uh, the county executive, for those who know Joe um, and know a little bit about how this happened, and we have footage of this memorial and you get a sense of it, it was within hours, maybe less, that he made the decision along with the freeholder uh, board, um, well, he made a decision this would happen, and it did happen within one year. But beyond all the brick and the mortar, um, what is it that you're feeling and thinking while you're listening to family members talk about their loved ones? You know, what we did at that particular time was the right thing to do it, you know, because what happened on that particular day was history, to lose 3,000 heroes. Uh, 57 in Essex County. 57 in Essex County, 700 in the state, and, you know, uh, the 3,000 that died that day. You know, we were the first ones that had a particular memorial on all 3,000, which I'm, I'm very, very proud of uh, what we were able to do. And it was the right thing to do. Uh, so, you know, we, we feel good about it. When you, when you hear the family members speaking, you know what you did was right, you know, as far as getting it done very quickly and getting people engaged, because we didn't want anybody ever to forget this particular day, because this day is a part of history forever. And we not only need our children, but our grandchildren to know, and future generations to know exactly what happened there and never forget and hopefully that incident could unite us because like I said our world has changed forever. And what's the, the other part of it is, is all 57 names were read, all 57 Essex County res residents who lost their lives were, were, uh, were read off by 
elected officials, appointed officials, dignitaries. Why did you make that decision, Joe, to do that uh, f really for the first time? Well, we did it the first year, and I thought it'd be cool. And we also we did it on the 10th, and I thought it was the right thing to do on the 15th. And, you know, maybe that's something we're going to continue, making sure we honor those who died that lived here in Essex County. I think the people that were here, and the majority of them from Essex County, really enjoyed that. They came up to me after their ceremony, and they asked me if we can continue that and honor all. 57. I said, say that. Actually, say their names. They yeah. want to hear it. They want to hear their names, you know, because there's some people that did not want to speak. You know, they just wanted to be here to remember and reflect. So that's something that we're going to consider and something that I think we're going to continue doing that tradition, reading the 57 names off. Finally, um, you've been involved in a lot of building, parks, recreation, all kinds of construction, all kinds of things. Is this what you're most proud of? This is, there's nothing more. This is where it's at. This is a part of history. To have 3,000 lives lost in one day and to be able to do something, to have their family members be able to reflect and remember, but also every, all the other people that come up here. This is the most important thing that I could have ever done uh, for, not only for the people that died, but for Essex County. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. The 15th anniversary of 9-11 uh, here at the September 11th Memorial at Eagle Rock in Essex County has concluded, and Elisa, Charters was uh, one of the powerful speakers here. You survived 9-11. Um, what floor were you on? I was on the 21st floor of Tower One. Your story, the way you spoke today, was so moving in so many ways. It is impossible for us to comprehend what you were going through, but you talked about miracles. Talk about it again. It's a miracle that I'm here today. It's a miracle that I get to live my life every day in a, in a somewhat normal way. Um, married, I have children, um, I have friends, I have experiences. Those things were not taken from me. So that's a miracle that I, I was chosen not to, not to be one of the people who couldn't get out. But you also talked about, at least talked about many of her colleagues at the Port Authority um, who did not survive. You, you named them, you said what they did, you talked about your relationship with them and their personalities. Why did, why did you do that? Because I had a very deep personal relationship with my coworkers. We were very close. I worked for a number of different departments and whatever department I worked in, we, we just, all of us bonded. That's the way it is at the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. So a day like this, um, by the way, is the 15th, I mean, every year is a special year, every year is a painful year. Was there anything different about today? Yes, it was very different. Um, I have been through the healing process now for 15 years. And as a matter of fact, last year was the first year I was actually able to go to a memorial service. So this year, I really felt like I could embrace the day. Um, last year, I didn't really know what to expect. It was my first time coming to the service. So today, I just felt like it was like I got over a hurdle, that I, I'm over part of the hurdle of the hurting, her healing process. What did you feel from the hundreds and hundreds of people who gathered here at uh, the Essex County Eagle Rock 9-11 Memorial? What were you feeling from this audience, this crowd? Tremendous love. It's, it's, it's really an unbelievable tribute that this county does, that the county exec puts together for, for the citizens here to participate in and to, to heal together. It's, it's, it's a wonderful bonding opportunity. It's an equal playing field where we're all here to support each other. I know this question is going to sound like a cliche. It's not intended to be one. Um, how much do you appreciate life? I appreciate it very much. There are times, however, when you have post-traumatic post stress disorder that you sometimes actually lose sight of what's going on. And that's part of the healing process too, unfortunately. Um, so there are moments that you realize that life is so incredibly amazing that you just dwell up and that you're so happy to be here and to be part of it. And there's a lot of guilt too that goes along with that because you are here and some of your loved ones are not. Um, and then there's the, the numbness because of the event and how our normal systems just try to block out the, the terror, the fear. Every morning, every single morning I wake up when my husband goes to work 
whether I have to wake up or not to tell him I love him because I'm uncertain if I will see him again. And that just goes along with the negative experience of what happened that day. We wish you and your family nothing but the best. Thank you so much. We're talking to U.S. Attorney uh, Paul Fishman, who just offered his um, very personal comments on the 15th anniversary of 9-11 um, here in Essex County at the Eagle Rock Memorial. You shared that story about going on the, uh, the 66 bus, 66 you're going bus. into New York. Describe that again. So I, I was, like a lot of people, we all remember where we were that morning. I was on the 66 bus on my way to the law firm I worked for in, in 2001, and somebody was listening to what I, we now quaintly refer to, I think, as a transistor radio, um, heard that one of the towers had been hit by a plane, and we all assumed it was a small plane. And then somebody said the second tower had been hit. And all of a sudden, people started to get a sense of what was going on. And we had actually had an argument with the bus driver because he didn't know what was going on. And we really wanted to turn around. And ultimately, we convinced him to go down the ramp in Hoboken and then spin around and come back to Montclair. And, and of course, there, my wife was home. Uh, she was four months pregnant with my son, who is now 14 and a half. Uh, and, and we watched on, on television helplessly, as, as everybody else did, as the towers came down. Well, you and I um, are around town a lot, and our children are close in age, and I struggle with this, So, and, and as do many parents. What do you tell your children? How do you talk about 9-11? Well, you know, it's, it, it's interesting. They have a lot of different reactions to it because they're kids. So, so, for example, you know, in the Justice Department, we've got a sort of twin responsibilities, right? We've got two things that, that, that are part of our mission around, around terrorism. One is obviously to do um, what law enforcement is always called upon to do, which is to protect the homeland, to protect the, the communities in which we live. And we do that by rooting out terrorist plots and by doing everything the Constitution and the laws of the United States allow us to do to investigate and prosecute people who would do us harm. But at the same time, we also have an obligation to protect the most vulnerable people in society. And so I remember when my talking to my son on the 10th anniversary, and I was going out to give a speech um, like this, and I was talking about what had happened on 9-11. Um, and he was obviously five years young. He was only nine. And, and I said, you know, one of the things we have to do is remind people that Islam is a religion of peace and that you can't, and he said, what you, why would you do that? And I said, well, there were 20 hijackers who were Muslims and there are a lot of people in the country who want to cast that net of blame so wide to blame all Muslims for doing this. And he looked at me and said, that's just stupid. And, and that's something that I carry with me in my work. It's our obligation to make sure that those messages of hate also don't get spread. And so we, we in the Justice Department, we're very committed to both of those things, obviously. What were you thinking and feeling as you listened to those family members? Well, I was thinking, I was thinking a lot of things. I mean, everybody always thinks, that could have been me. If I'd been on the wrong bus or the wrong subway and gone up into the World Trade Center, and we all have friends who, who and like Alyssa Charters, who is a, fr a friend of mine and her son is on my son's baseball team, to know that she got out. A survivor. A survivor is an, is an amazing thing. So you think about the people who made it out. You think about the people who didn't. Um, what I think about also are all the people who helped them get out. I mean, you know, in, in we tend to take law enforcement a little for granted sometimes, even those sometimes, those of us who are in it. But to remember and realize what those people did, knowing that the buildings were at risk, that they were at risk to run in while other people were screaming and running out is a remarkable thing. And so I think of all of those things when I listen to those survivors. Their stories are just remarkable stories. And, and you, no matter how many times I come here, I'm always moved to tears by listening to their stories. Finally, why is it so important that we always remember? I think it's important that we remember, um, partly we owe it to them. We owe it to the people who lost loved ones. I think we owe it to ourselves to remember that terrible things can happen in the United States of America and that we need to be vigilant. I think we owe it to ourselves to remember that we have a collective obligation to do more. That there's, that there's always something else that we can do to make the lives of survivors better, to make the, the lives of, of families who lost loved ones better, and really for those of us who are in government, who work for the United States of America, um, to, who are public servants, to remember that as, as proud as I am of the, of the ridiculously hard work that the people in my law enforcement community do, we can always still probably do just a little bit more. Just one more. Are we as safe are you comfortable enough with how safe we are? 
we're never going to be perfectly safe. I mean, that's the, the reality is that there is danger in the world. And, and one of the wonderful things about the United States of America and the things that make people want to come here are the, are, are the liberties and the freedoms that we have. We, we could probably be safer if we didn't enjoy the freedoms that we have. But that's a struggle we've been fighting for more than 200 years. That's a struggle that we're going to continue to fight. Um, we, we, but those of us who have an obligation to keep people safe are doing everything we can with the tools that we have. To see more Caucus New Jersey with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD. And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. We're uh, talking to Helman Correa, whose son Danny Correa uh, worked for an accounting firm on the 98th floor of the North Tower. Helman spoke at this extraordinary event, and uh, you are an amazing man, and, and your son, Danny, was a special young man. Oh, thank you very much, Stephen. I mean, this is an opportunity to, I mean, as a family member, to come over here to uh, keep our uh, our family members alive. And this is, uh, once again, thank you. And thanks for the community over here, the uh, West Orange and the Eagle Rock Reservation, because once again, every year, they bring us over here to keep us together and to try to keep, I mean, the memory of our loved ones alive. You talked about your son. Uh, how old was he? Uh, he was 25 years old when he started work at the World Trade Center. And he was an amazing young guy. And um, he was, he told me regularly, uh, Daddy, I'm working on the clouds. And uh, apparently one of those clouds took him away from us. You also talked about uh, a grandchild. Oh, yeah. Uh, he left us uh, um, the best, precious gift ever, ever, ever we ever have. And uh, that's uh, our uh, granddaughter, Katrina. She is now 18 years old. And we are, I mean, we are so happy and we have no words to describe what we're feeling right now because uh, she's our, she's right now in our lives. When you were speaking today and, and you were up there and you're, I was standing right next to you, can you describe what you were feeling? Honestly, I was numb because this is something you can prepare, you can practice, you can do anything you want before to come over here. But soon, when you come in front of people and have to speak about your loved one, I mean, all your feelings disappear and you're just right there. You're just right there. Harry and Pat are two very special people who are here an awful lot. They're here um, just about every year. But um, Harry, let me ask you, you're not only wearing very patriotic um, clothes, but you are here to also tell us something about your friend Pat. She has a special connection to this event, doesn't she? Yes, she does. She wrote the poem about 9-11, and it's on a plaque here. Yeah, this is a poem right here, the 15th anniversary of 9-11. Uh, it starts, it never gets any easier meeting here year after year. And not only is it in the program, but Pat, it's also um, part of this ceremony. Where is it It's part of this memorial? Describe it. Well, Joe, uh, on June, county executive. I'm sorry, Joe D, the county executive, uh, had a place permanently right over there uh, for everyone to see. And it's a poem that I wrote in 2002 for the very first program of the 9-11 memorial. What is the poem about and why did you write it? Well, we've been here since the beginning. Uh, on 9-11, my friend Marie and I came up here and uh, you know, we saw that everybody was up here. They were leaving poems. They were leaving pictures. We could see everything that was going on in New York. And I was just so moved by it. And then when I heard that Joe D was going to have the memorial permanently, this poem came to me. So I wrote it, and my friend Marie Stauffer, who knows Joe, uh, presented it to him and asked him if he would be interested. And fortunately, he liked it. So that's each year I write a brand new one. He puts it in every year. You know, it's hard for people to appreciate, um, and for those of us who live in this area, who are from Essex County, and there are people watching us all throughout the tri-state region, there are memorials all over. There's the, the biggest one, obviously, in lower Manhattan, which is extraordinary. 
But this particular location, with the view, the direct, unobstructed view of the New York skyline, describe for folks, Harriet, those of us who came up here literally that day, what was going on up here. By the way, you couldn't even get up here at a certain point because there were so many people here. What was it like early on? It was just a tragedy that something like this could ever happen and our country will never be the same. It did bring people together, I will say that. What do you mean by that? Well, everybody, you know, everybody, nobody, no prejudice. Everybody was going through that horror of watching that on television. But so you, we all went to each other for comfort. You, you've seen, um, you've seen a few things in your very young lifetimes. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> you, you've seen our country challenged in a lot of different ways. Uh, in wartime, um, tragedy. What makes 9-11 different, special, more painful, or painful in a certain way? Because it happened right here on American soil, and we, we could see it, you know, in real time. It wasn't something that you just watched on TV, which we did, but we were here and we could see the smoke from New York. And you're right, we couldn't get in here right away. In fact, we had to go down to one of the side roads, you know, to, to see it, but we've... I don't know, it happened in our time and we're watching it. Yeah. It, and it just affects everybody. Harry, let me ask you, today we heard from um, three family members who lost loved ones, including a very young son, a, a husband, uh, a sister, and we heard from a young woman who survived, right? Yes. What were you um, feeling and thinking as you, you listened today? Well, my heart just broke for them. It was just such a tragedy. But they did rise above it, which was beautiful. Yeah. It was beautiful. Finally, what did today mean to you? The 15th anniversary, um, I mean, again, the 10th was important, the 5th is important, the 20th will be important. Right. Anything special for you today? You know, just seeing everybody year after year, the faces start to look familiar, but today there seem to be so many more. And I'm just so happy and proud of America that nobody has forgotten. Everybody is, is here, and like you said, we all became one, mm -hmm. and that, that means so much. After the uh, 15th anniversary 9-11 ceremony, I met this gentleman, Mr. Ray Fusco, whose uh, daughter, Elisa Charters. Charters, who I just talked to before, was a survivor that day. She was uh, the sole survivor who spoke here at the event here at Eagle Rock. Um, you heard dad, and I just want to ask you, what was going through your mind and your heart as you listened to your daughter today? Well, we're very fortunate that she survived it. And uh, I remember the day clearly because I live on a ridge in Clifton, New Jersey. And uh, one of the tragedies for me was that I was powerless. I would have walked to New York to help, but unfortunately, there was no way that I uh, could have done that. And in addition to that, what I didn't realize, too, was how many friends we had. After that incident, I was on a phone literally for three days, just relatives, cousins. My wife is from Latin America, and the calls were nonstop. So in that respect, it was really, uh, you know, emotionally touching for me. Now, your granddaughter that you're, you're holding right here, yeah. that that's, whole son's daughter. that's your son's daughter. Right. But for those of us who say we appreciate life, um, how much do you appreciate your life, but also the life of, of those around you, your loved ones? Number one, I'm very concerned about the family. We're very fortunate that we live within a close proximity of six miles. And my grandkids are continuously in my house and my wife and I are not the uh, type of people say, oh, we can't wait till they're gone. They can come, have a good time, do whatever you want to do. This is your downtime. So uh, in terms of, uh, and, and I think it's important to us to, to, to have, to connect with these relationships with your family and your grandchildren. It's very important. What does this 9-11 memorial, particularly the 15th anniversary, mean to you? Well, it's a very emotional moment. And I was looking out at the horizon and I'm saying- Looking at New York City. New York City, yes, east, of course. And I'm saying, what, what a great country, what a great group of people. You know, we're all together. 
that's very, very important. And I look at that and I say that development was done from immigrants, from people of uh, hardworking backgrounds uh, and uh, intellect. So we're very fortunate. We're still the best country in the world. Finally, why is it so important that we never forget? Well, it's important, I, I believe, because we have to be very careful about what political decisions we make in the world and what our politicians do and decisions that they make so that we can avoid this from ever happening again. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence and 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Investors Bank, NJIT, Jersey Central Power and Light, RWJ Barnabas Health, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, the New Jersey State Nurses Association, and the Institute for Nurses, and by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios. There are still half a million uninsured people in New Jersey who are eligible for free or low-cost health insurance. Do you or someone you know need health insurance? Or has your insurance recently changed? Healthcare.gov provides all the information you need to find new coverage. Open enrollment starts November 1st. You may qualify for financial assistance or for New Jersey family care. Free local assistance is available to help you understand your options and get enrolled before the deadline so you don't have to pay the penalty.